What's up guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Elden Ring, Kita Edition. Uh, hey look, who's that guy? Let's go say hi to him. I warped to, uh, this, the Castle of Morn Rampart, by the way, because I figured for some of the exploration I'm gonna do, this will be, uh, make more sense. Oh, and there's another Knight's Cavalry here. I hadn't found this guy before. Alright. I guess it's nighttime, so, you know, they show up at night. That's cool. I'll have to go do this on my main game. I'm sure he will be a lot easier on my main game, because, you know, um, I'm a way higher level. Oh, boy. I'm doing good. Nice. I can't... It's pretty exciting to find, like, a dude I just straight up missed. This guy seems a little tougher, actually, because a lot of his hits just, um, straight up hit me. The other guy's, like... A weapon was a little too long so yeah it's interesting the the combat because you really do have to pay attention to which side you're on when you're on a horse as opposed to you know other nice thank you he doesn't seem to have to care wow lucky him I'm running low on HP flasks already shoot oh god oh god oh god oh god all right Man, I'm really low here. The good thing, though, is that once I switch over to my brand new Wondrous Physic Flask... No, 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 get away, get away, get away. I'm being, like, way too cautious and laissez-faire with him, to be honest. Yeah, I should be waiting for him to do swings and finish his swings when I come in for the strike, but... Yeah, no. Who needs to play well when you can play poorly, right? I also keep on hitting his horse and not him. Get him, get him! Alright, here we go. I probably can only get a couple strikes in before I need to run away. Oh, nice. I, could, I got a whole decent amount in. Oh! Goodbye, Knight's nice Cavalry. What a start. I didn't. I knew that there were multiple Knight's nice Cavalries. For some reason, I didn't know about this one. Alright, Ash of War, Barricade Shield, and Knight Rider Flail. Sick. Let's take a look at this. I've been... Actually, I think I have... There's The Knight's stuff is more interesting than you initially realized, so... Uh, what did I get? I just forgot. Um, I know the Night Flail. Oh, right, right. I got one of the Ashes of War. Um, Barricade Shield. Uh, y yep. Doesn't say anything interesting. That's... Oh, wait, no. Barricade Shield. Skill made famous by Sir Nightheart or Needheart. That's about it. Uh, okay. But the Night Rider one is what I'm more interested in. All right. A Flail with two additional bludgeoning heads. Weapon of the Knight's Cavalry who ride funeral steeds. Large spikes make it uh, highly effective in inducing blood loss, but also demand higher dexterity to wield. Oh, interesting. It's like a little dex weapon there. Yeah, did not know that. All right. Um, I'm going to, I guess, rest at the, the f side of grace again by warping, but might as well grab another level up because I think I can. I can't. I was wrong. All right. Let's go to this forested area. That's my next section in. Yeah, so I was gonna go where you guys suggested next, but I ended up, uh... I ended up getting my video up a little later than I meant to, so I don't have any comments in yet, because I'm recording literally right after I posted the last episode, so I apologize. But I will still listen to your thoughts for, uh, you know, going forward here. So, I, I do like having the conversation with you guys a lot. That's part of why I enjoy doing these, to be honest. I feel like I learn a lot from you guys as I do these. And hopefully I can share what I learned from you uh, as well, like, with the class, you know, with everybody. Yellow Amber, a sign that the sea suffered from the Flame of Frenzy. This grape has ripened and burst. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, so th that's like a little clue-in of what's coming up here. This Frenzy stuff that we're gonna find in the forest. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, so we have to worry about Frenzy enemies coming up here. As far as I'm aware, there's nothing in that house, so... Not every house is explorable, sadly. I'm going to avoid the bass for now because I don't need to. <laughs> I just don't. Whatever. I'm not going to worry about them. So, yeah, the knights, um, basically there's actually an area that's specifically, like, related to the knights. I think that eye of yellow is new, so let's look at it real quick. Uh, the, uh, there it is. Grown in lands afflicted by frenzy, again, it's used for its pain-relieving properties, though it's also known to be a dangerous intoxicant, so... Really, just more clue-ins that this is going to be a frenzy area. And here we go. Frenzy guy. Uh, I can't remember if there's a shrine of grace here. 
in this area? There probably is, so hopefully I can find that. Yeah, it's nice to... I'm going to deal with as many rats as I can while they're on their own so I don't get, like, totally ambushed by annoying, annoying rats. Yeah, okay, there's a... Ch I remember that there is something important here. I know there's the church, which I think actually has another, um... Sacred Tear in it. Yeah, Cali Baptismal Church, it does, definitely. I remember that name, so... Yes. Oh, look, big boy rat over there. Actually, so what's fun about the comments, too, I love the community aspect of these games, is I literally found out a huge thing in Stormvale Castle I somehow managed to miss. And I feel like I'm usually pretty good about exploring areas, but finding out about that, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing, and it was thanks to the comments, so... Um, it, that's like, I just love the community aspect of all this stuff. Oh, Flame of Frenzy. I didn't realize that was just gonna... I don't I, th I don't think that was a drop. I think it was just there, and it was in the area where I was picking up drops. Incantation originating from the maddening three fingers. Not two fingers. And, and this is really important, actually. That three fingers now. Alright, so we have a two fingers in the picture now. We have a three fingers in the picture. This is something different. Uh, causes the yellow flame of frenzy to burst forth from the caster's eyes. Something interesting, too, I didn't realize, uh, this is what's nice for me going through this lore stuff again, is that the, it's, this is claiming that the three fingers is maddening. Um, because we're gonna get a lot about the three fingers as we keep on going, and the two fingers, so. Uh, they're really, really worth, like, paying attention to things that have to do with them, because they're going to be conflicting forces. The Flame of Frenzy deals damage and causes buildup of madness. This incantation also causes buildup of madness in the caster and is only effective against Tarnished. Oh, it's interesting. It's only effective against Tarnished. I wonder why. All right, let's get another Sacred Tear. So that automatically makes it worth visiting up here in this area. But on top of the church, we have a little village here that we're going to also be uh, looking into and exploring. And I'm going to go on that hill and see if there's a Shrine of Grace up there. I don't... I don't remember if there is or isn't, but, you know, why not explore and find out? But, yeah, what I was saying about the community stuff is just, like, it's it really does bring me joy. Uh, just having that aspect, and that's actually what I like about when Future Press is late on their guides, is it's so fun with these, just, like, discovering with a community. It, it makes it such a fun feeling. Um, so I just got distracted by my phone. Um, as an aside, a lot of things going on right now with, obviously, I've been slammed with work because I work at GameSpot, and, uh, I'm, like, their Elden Ring guy. So as soon as I got the review code, I wasn't, I, I was kind of braggadocious in a way, uh, in the wrong way. Oh, there is a Shrine of Grace up here. Sick. There it is. Um, to be honest, where I was like, oh, I can usually finish these games in a few days, because we got a review code. Like a week before the reviews were due. And that's like, oh, it's fine. I'm sure I'll have the game beaten. Maybe even twice by the time that happens. Because usually when I get these games in the past for my YouTube channel. I, I'll play through it once without recording anything. And just have fun. And not record anything. Not worry about it and just enjoy myself. But since it was for work, I was like, you know what? It's fine. I won't do my typical normal playthrough without anything turned on. I'm going to do recordings right away. And seriously, thank god I did with this game. I didn't realize just how massive it would be. I think I'm about 90 hours into my main game now. Um, 90 hours, and I still haven't finished. I, I could now, and at the point where I can finish. And I honestly, I think you could do a speed run. I, I'm trying to figure this out. You might only have to fight four bosses in the speed run, honestly. Although they'll be very hard, because you'll be very underleveled for them, but um, it's an interesting thing with this, but Again, I just, I feel like I, I didn't have enough time. It was insane. I was like, oh my god. I was like staying up until 2 a.m. every day, just trying to get through it. And uh, it's not a way you should experience a game, honestly, that you enjoy. Flamecrest Wooden Shield. This yellow flame is the symbol of the affliction, serving as a warning to those who might approach the village. Oh, interesting. Carried by soldiers of the village that is afflicted by frenzy. That's interesting they would give it to the soldiers. I don't, I'm very lucky that I get to do this stuff for work, so don't take me wrong. I'm not trying to just complain. But, you know, it's just when it's a game like this, that, like, I've been looking forward to this game for years. Um, it's just, like, not the ideal way to play. That's all. So you should definitely, like, enjoy the game how you want to enjoy it at your pace. 
So that's the trade-off when it, I, you know, minor trade-off when it becomes work. But obviously, I'm very, very lucky that I get to do that. So I don't want to come off unappreciative, and I hope I'm not. But I guess my point that I was saying, I'm trying to remember why I even brought that up. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still working through it. I'm still discovering things. Um, yeah, as far as my text that I was distracted by, I'm actually uh, getting married in... Oh, this is what it was. Okay, so I've been really busy with work because uh, a couple weeks ago I just got slam dunked with like staying up until 2 a.m. every day. Because on top of this, I'm trying to make videos and organize videos and stuff like that. So it's not like I'm only... I'm going to check one more time with the sweep of the village before I move on. So it's not like I'm only um, playing the game either. I'm like, you know, making videos, writing content, editing stuff. Um, voiceover, which is easy and fun, but still another thing I'm doing. No, I, at the moment, I'm going to call it for this village and say that's it. But yeah, all, all the point is is that I've been busy with that. And then on top of that, I'm actually getting married in a couple weeks here in my place, one of my favorite places in the whole world, in Kauai, in Hawaii. Uh, I just, I love Hawaii so much. And same with my fiance. We both absolutely love Hawaii. So, I mean, most of it I made sure was all planned beforehand. But it's just been like an additional added thing where it's just like, I've just been non-stop, so... If things are slow or anything, I hope you understand. That's why. I'm sure you guys do. Um, but yeah, that's that's been me lately. It's been non-stop Elden Ringing and uh, wedding planning stuff and all that and honeymoon planning and uh, it's just it's been a lot, but it's all good stuff. So that's the the nice thing. Everything is good. So uh, definitely very fortunate right now. And yeah, I mean Elden Ring's just been fantastic. I do want to hear from you guys who are playing it, though. I'm curious how you so far, and I know no one's that far into the game yet, because, like I said, as I'm posting this, at least, it's like a 90... I, I'm 90 hours in, could finish the game, but there's so much side content. There's so much side content. I could have finished the game earlier, but I'm still going to keep on finding side content. I'm like, oh my god, there's even more? There's even more? There's even more? It's like non-stop how much side content I'm finding. Um, it's unbelievable how big the game is. So I, I'm curious, though, how you guys think of the game so far and what your thoughts are and how you stack it up personally for you. Don't care about what other people think. Specifically for you, how do you stack up this to other Souls games and other from software games that you have played? And if this is your first one, what are you thinking of it? I'd really like to know in the comments your thoughts. I'm going to read some answers and all that, of course, and chat with you guys about it. I'm going to say it for myself. I think this game's an absolute masterpiece. Uh, I really think, and right now our working review for GameSpot that I'm not writing, that Tamor Hussein has written, has given a 10 out of 10. And I fully agree with that assessment. And I don't honestly think that of, for me, of Dark Souls 3 or Dark Souls 2, even though I really enjoy those games. Uh, however, I would give Bloodborne and Dark Souls 1 a 10 out of 10, personally. Um, and for me, I think my favorite game, and this is just, again, obviously very personal. Here we have a little boss guy. I'm going to try to take out some of his minions first before dealing with him so I don't get screwed by being overwhelmed. I don't remember how hard or easy he is. Oh, wait. She's a queen. I think actually it's a queen, I so it might be a her now that I think about it. Yeesh. You need your steed. Actually, I might not need it. He might be easier without the steed now that I think about it. Or she. I keep on saying he. My bad. My bad. Wow, that was not rough at all, actually. Demi-human queen staff. Crystal burst. <laughs> Demi-human queen staff and crystal burst. Uh... One of the glintstone sorceries of the Academy of Raya Lucaria, or Raya Lucaria, I keep doing that. A sorcery of the Crystal Cadre, a group of sorcerers who pursued the wisdom of stones, the secrets locked in the faint cognition of the Crystallians. Oh, interesting. We're going to find out about Crystallians soon. Uh, one moment, sorry. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's interesting with the Crystallians. Um, oh, and that was before the reason I was distracted was my, my fiance was texting me about wedding stuff. And that's why I'm 
distracted again, but you know, is what it is. Okay, demi human queen staff, glintstone staff style as a scepter. <laughs> apparently, uh, apparently her dog just decided to uh, cover himself in crap and roll all over her. Uh, okay, so glintstone staff style is a scepter, a gift once given to the demi humans to foster peace. It can be wielded even by those of low intelligence. It's interesting that they reached out for peace, and I guess there might have been for a little bit with the Demi-Humans, actually. But, uh, clearly it didn't work out. I don't know if the Falchion has any lore, but let's, let's take a look at it. Falchion. Oh, now I have two, so I could dual-wield it. Um, wielders of the weapon employ a unique style that enhances attacks with spinning motions. Sick. Arteria Leaf. Yeah, we always find those, and they always seem like they're supposed to be super rare. And I think I read them off before, actually, now that I think about it. That actually might be all that's really in this specific rune. The Demi-Human Forest Rune, but there is, like, as you see, there a cave that I'm going to go to. There's also the one over here I have to hit up, so... Uh, plenty of caves that we're going to do. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I decided just to do a sweep of the Weeping Peninsula, because I'm a completionist like that. And in my brain, I'm like, I'm here. I need to do it. I'm here. I'm going to have to do it eventually anyways. And I'm here. I'm here. This is my place now. It's my location. It has to be done. So that's the way my brain works. Oh, I wonder if I found this in my main game. There's a lot of stuff like this where you have to, like, leap over walls. I guess I can always check. I, I've been, like, keeping detailed notes of everything I find and where. And, like, detailed footage where I have, like, everything labeled. Shield of the Guilty. Oh my god, I don't think I found this. That's interesting. Finding new stuff already is sick. It looks really cool, too. Shield made to venerate a maiden whose eyes were crushed by briars of sin before being reborn in these lands. Uh, venerating the repose of the soul, the shield boosts focus. The briars can be used to attack foes. Hmm. Crazy stuff. Yeah, so almost every... Um, every one of these, I'd say, I, I don't know if it's true of all of them, but almost every one of these runes will have a basement. So always really, really watch out for those. I might have actually gotten here before I realized that, and maybe that's why I didn't find it in my ori like original main game. Oh man, I'm gonna have to do so many games. I really want to try to do a speed run, actually, and like stream it or something, because I really think at this point I have the fastest strategy for a speed run potentially, but I don't know how far other people have gotten by now, but like, as of like two days ago, I was like, I have it! I know how to do the speed run. Although I'm not good enough at the game to do it, but I know where and how. I know where to do it! I know the low- I know the- the run! Granted, I don't know, um, what items you need and all that. I feel like I might have mentioned this yesterday too, but sorry. Oh, sh crap. I meant to- I meant to get that. At least I can get the Shrine of Grace now, I guess. Give myself a level up, so if I fall to my death, I won't have to run all the way over here again. More strength! More strength! This is going to be awesome. I could maybe even run to Kaelid and grab my uh, Ultra Greatsword. Be guts sooner than expected. Get! Oh, damn it. <laughs> Got blocked. Blocking my path. How dare it. All right. Oh, what do you know? Again, this is like a fake one first. Just like the other tunnel. Huh. All right. Well, this will be the real one for Smithing Stone 1. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, if you watched any of the promotional material by El for Elden Ring before the game came out, this is actually what I'm about to start this tunnel. This is one of the tunnels they were showing in a bunch of the promotional footage. Uh, actually, I know specifically when it's like secondary b-roll that came in for the later promotional footage. The amazing thing with this game is that, you know, for the there's so much stuff you could show and bosses and all that that without having played, you'd be like, oh my god, why are they spoiling so much? And then it turns out the game is just that huge that you can show all that and you're really not spoiling much just by virtue of the game being insanely big. <laughs> you know, it's like crazy how much you could show for this game without really fully spoiling everything. Wow. Yeah, these guys are getting taken out. I really do feel a little guilty for coming to this area first as opposed to Stormvale, to be honest. Uh, but 
like I said, now I'm here, and now this is my life, is this cave. I wonder if you could pick up that material there. No. Okay. It was a fun inquiry for a moment. It was fun to ponder about. But yeah, I very, very specifically remember watching some B-roll, the guy crossing over this thing and being like, ooh, I didn't find that. Where is it? Since I got to play the network test and... Uh, and actually, I got to play eight hours of the game before it came out. Or seven hours. It was seven hours. And I was just trying to trying to see if I could beat Godric. Uh, so, that was like my main thing. It was like weird. I was trying to like explore as much as I could, but then also see if I could like beat Godric. So it was like, it's just stressful to see how, when you have like that tight of a deadline. I'm like, seven hours. Seven hours. What, what can I do in seven hours? What can I do? Golden Rune 2. Alright. And before I knock that guy, because, you know, they like to bum rush you, uh, certain enemies. You always want to deal with these miners when you know for certain that nobody else is going to attack you. So, always be on the lookout for that before hitting the miners, because they're chill and they won't come uh, gank you. All Smithing Stone 1s. Well, that'll be good for when I get my Ultra Great Sword. I love it. Granted, that sword is very, very expensive to upgrade. Because it's so badass. And everyone's like, Dragon Slayer? I don't have this skill. That's gonna cost a lot for me to try to do that. Smith on that Dragon Slayer. Alright, stanching it. Boluses. I actually don't know what this helps with. Blood loss, okay. Alleviates impending blood loss. Yeah, blood loss is brutal when you get uh, find enemies who just like wail on you really quickly. I think blood loss is actually like a, probably a really good idea. Adding blood bleed to your weapons if you're a uh, dex build, because if you just like quickly wail on guys and add that blood loss, that's just like an instant damage boost. That's pretty massive. So actually, now that I think about it, that might be a fun way to do a dex build. I just haven't tried it yet. Yeah, it's like amazing how much variety too in builds there is in this game and Souls games in general, but I feel like this game just adds even more. Okay, who's going to jump on me when I go in there? I don't see anybody yet. Oh, Somber Smithing Stone for your special skills. There we go. This is the guy. This is the one, probably, who would have tried to ambush me. And, oh, another one there that I didn't even notice before. You will not ambush me when I enter that house. Not cool if you do. All right, now... Oh, you dropped something. Cracked crystal. Great. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but somber smithing stones are how you level up your, like, special weapons. As opposed to basic weapons, like what I'm using. My basic bitch weapon here. Uh, I've gotten a few, so maybe I already mentioned it. So, worth bringing it up again, potentially. Exalted Flesh, that's all it was for. Temporarily boost physical attack. Huh, I've actually never used one of these. Maybe it would be a good idea. I should really do more crafting, because you can craft this too. Considered a delicacy in the Badlands, this invigorating repast was for the exclusive benefit of those who they deem heroes. Yeah, that sort of thing could really give you a nice boost for some bosses and all that. But to me, it's like, I always want to, I always worry about using stuff like that. Because I want to make sure I don't just waste it and use it and get owned by a boss right away. So I want to always be at the point where I feel pretty good about being the boss anyways before I use that sort of thing. So it doesn't feel like it goes to waste. Uh, but yeah, that's just, that's just me. Oh, look at this lore. Look at this lore. These demi-humans are being slave drivers, right? At least that was my interpretation of this area. It's demi-human slave drivers, essentially. That didn't go so bad. Thought I'd get, like, ganked, but none of the miners seemed to care. You're welcome, miners. You're welcome. Although now I'm gonna have to kill you so I can get the materials you're mining. But for now, you're welcome. I'm like Maui from, uh... Moana right now. Let me just say you're welcome. Don't remember how the song goes, but... You know what I'm talking about. That was a great movie. And 
great location. Hawaii is seriously the best. Honestly, if I could move to Hawaii and work there, I think I'd just do it in, right away. <laughs> That's in a heartbeat if I felt like I could do my career there. Also, there's the issue of the cost, but I, just, I love Hawaii so much. Yeah, something I don't talk about too much, but I showed briefly in one of my uh, recent videos is, I, like, I moved to L.A. from Chicago, and that's where I currently am. And I picked up surfing as a hobby about three or four years ago, and I'd always wanted to surf my entire life, and I'd gone to Hawaii with my family before and done it a little bit as a kid. Uh, but this is where I, like, I finally, like, really got into it, and I just, I love it. And just the idea of being able to do that in warm water every day, it's just, like, it's such a nice thought. Is it... Water is cold here, especially right now. To not need to put on a super heavy suit. That, that's the dream. That's the dream. But even beyond that, I just, I love tropical locations. It's just my favorite. Everyone's different, right? Like, do you like forests? Do you like mountains? Do you like deserts? Do you like tropical? Like, what's your favorite? And actually, I'll ask you guys that too. Additional question for this. What's your favorite type of location? What brings you peace? For me, tropical locations is number one, and two is like forest with like a stream would be, I guess, a number two. But yeah, everyone's different. Like those are for me, my top two, but then some people it's like in the mountains and so you can see everything. Like my fiance is big on that. And some people are deserts. So yeah, Scaly Misbegotten. Oh, I guess these guys are called Misbegotten's, huh? I thought they were, I think they're a class of demi-humans still though, but pretty sure, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, so this is actually a good guy to fight right now, uh, to get used to his moveset. Because uh, this is going to eventually, a, a different version of this is essentially going to become a normal enemy. Yeah, I didn't realize his windup was going to be so extreme, but... I kind of forgot. Rusted Anchor. Awesome. Let's take a look at that Rusted Anchor. Oh, it's in weapons. What am I thinking? All right. A Rusty Anchor wielded as a weapon. Each of its four flukes is thick and sharp, enabling piercing attacks. When the Tarnish left the lands between with their lord, one boat alone was said to have been left behind. I still haven't figured that one out, to be honest, but that's that's really interesting to me. The whole thing of that. So I I think this is this is kind of what I think, and I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh that the tarnished have to do with the first sin and the death of the demigods with the death rune. But I, I'm not sure, and I know I actually think I know the character who did it now, uh who it was who did the stole the death rune. I'm pretty positive actually that I know that, but um and I don't think they were tarnished. But I think the tarnished have a lot to do with all that that's going on. Um, okay, I think I think everything's explored here. Except there actually there might be a shrine of grace around here somewhere. But that's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep exploring for now. And I guess I'll think about that later. Because I want to go to some more of these dungeons. Rather than just doing aimless exploration. As much as I enjoy aimless, some good aimless exploration, uh, I don't like doing it on Let's Plays. Uh, especially unless I've prepared stuff to talk about. So, yeah, back to the Death Rune and the Tarnish, though. Something that I've been thinking is that the Tarnish were kicked out because kicked, kick out, kicked out because it had to do with the death of the first demigod, and they were blamed for it. That would be my guess, but again, I'm still kind of piecing this together and figuring things out so i don't quote me on that yet that's just like a current working theory and i, I really need to piece together item descriptions and finish the game before i i can say like oh this is definitely how i feel this is definitely what i think is going on uh because i just don't know yet but it's it's kind of an interesting thought to me so uh because again like the whole thing is you are returning to the lands between now right so there's that aspect uh, I guess it's going to be down this way a little bit further for the dungeon. Yeah, maybe it's like further down here. Unless that shadow I just saw was the dungeon, but... Um, hey, this is why they give you the little statue to guide you. Because, yeah, I'm way too far away now, I think. 
Maybe it wasn't that crevice that was dark and I, for whatever reason, decided it wasn't. Whoops. Also, I thought I'd be able to quickly jump up there. Or wait, or is it like over here? Nah. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Like, what do you guys think in that regard? Because the other thing, too, is with that, talking about the tarnish leaving with a boat. Uh, and all the tarnish needing to leave the lands between. Again, like, why else would you need to leave the lands between other than potentially during the war and everything, all the other demigods, like, and the Golden Order and all that were kicking you out for this, this vast sin of what happened. So, yeah, that's, that's what I think. But, oh, there it is. Oh my god, it was right in that spot. So dumb of me. So dumb. Yeah, there are definitely some of these just hidden in nooks. Which is why they give you the waypoints to find it, I suppose. Hey, we're back in some catacombs, so you know what that means. Grave warts. <laughs> we're gonna find plenty of that stuff. More strength! Aw, no physical up. That's okay. I guess I can live with it. Well, I have a stone sword key, so we're going to be okay here. I'm curious how many I have. I have one. Okay, there's another spot I wanted to go to, um, but that's all right. Something I want to point out here, sometimes these guys take one stone sword key, sometimes they take two. See how the bottom one has a stone sword key inside of him right now? That's what shows us that this guy only takes one, because there's already a stone sword key in this other one. If there is no stone sword key in the bottom one, then they take two. Uh, this jail over here, I was hoping to use a stone sword key. It takes a stone sword key, so I was hoping to go there. But, uh, you know what? I'm in this dungeon, so I'm just going to use it here because I'm here. So, you know. I'm glad I picked that up earlier, though. That would have sucked to need to try to remember to come back here. And for skeletons, you're going to need to kill that mist stuff there. That's their actual uh, life or death. Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 9. Oh, great. Totally worth it. I'm sure it's stuff I'm going to use all the time. A Ranker Pot. Oh. Perfect. Amazing. Just what I needed. Wait. Oh, no. That's just from the skeleton, I guess. I don't know if this is a dungeon that has illusory walls. I don't remember, but I'll start swinging at ones that look like potentials. Um, yeah, I, I wish I remembered, though. I th there are definitely some in Liurnia that have illusory walls, but this one, I don't know. And hopefully I find another stone sword key here sometime soonish. Otherwise, I'll have to... I'll probably purchase one. I mean, I don't have to, but I'll probably purchase one. Just so I can, you know, go through areas without thinking about it. I still think Golden Sea was the best choice, hands down. I, I'm not taking that back. Because, again, Golden Seas are limited here. Stone Sword Key is not really. And just the effect of a Golden Seed is so much better. I mean, you might find something great behind a Stone Sword Key. But, again, then you can also find out that's the one to, to go to. Uh, or you'll always be able to come back for it at some point. I actually find these guys easier to find with the wide swipe, so... That's nice to use it this way. Look at that. Some Grave Glove Wards. Oh, 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 oh. No. Also, a guy's about to roll at me from the side, I think. Uh, from the side area to the right. Is this a skeleton who might come? Over there. Yeah, that was the guy. Well, luckily he decided not to ambush me, so... Well, lucky me! Now he's gonna come say hi. Of course, I missed with my first swipe. On my main game, I've been playing with an Ultra Grey Sword, so I'm kind of used to that length. Hey, Longbow, I don't think I can use it. I doubt I have the stats for it. Where is it? Uh-huh. Yep, I don't have the stats. I need one more dex. Oh, man, I don't know about that. That's so much. I can use my short bow, though. I can use my short bow, so it's all good. Yeah, I'm starting to think this isn't the dungeon that has an illusory wall, but... You just never know. There's other things that are illusory too that aren't just uh, walls. Like you'll find also um, 
illusory uh, da, da, da. what are they called? You'll find illusory like bookshelves, for example. So yeah, not everything. I think I just saw a guy try to kill me, so I'm gonna wait a moment. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Trust Skeleton trying to come back to life, not on my watch. Alright, is there anything up there? Aha! There is. So this is where this time we can actually use this to our advantage. But you know what? Before I do, I'll go ahead and explore over there, because I have a feeling that's actually the way we're supposed to go. And by that, I actually think I remember that. I'm starting to think I remember this dungeon now. There's just so many dungeons in this game, it's hard to keep track of and remember every single one. Alright, so as soon as I get this, it's going to be an ambush or some item. So, that's okay. We're just going to let this do the job for us, actually. Oh, yeah. Haha. <laughs> I love it. Just using the fire, it's amazing. I love using the traps against the enemies. It's so satisfying. And yeah, again, no lore that I'm aware of on these things. Yeah, it just says what you can say. And that's it. Um, also, sorry for people who want PvP that I'm playing offline. It's mainly just because I don't like seeing the messages, and I also haven't repaid for my PlayStation subscription. A little bit of both. A little bit of both, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. Part of it's not wanting to pay. But, it's kind of nice to not get messages. I like going to these games blind, so... Uh, that's just a nice feeling for me. Even though I'm not as blind now, it's still nice. I like the feeling of solitude in these. No skeletons coming to ambush. Nine. Nay! Nee. I think there's going to be a lot of dungeons in this game where, uh, unfortunately, I just probably won't have that much lore to talk about. Whereas in, like, the previous games, there's kind of always something worth pointing out. Since, in a sense, these are a little chalice dungeon-y, just in the sense of, uh, from Bloodborne. Just in the sense that there's usually not, like, directly lore in these. Except for sometimes you'll find, like, interesting items or bosses or stuff. Sometimes. Like, you really do. Uh, or, like, different things that you pick up that lore. But for the most part, the actual exploration isn't going to be. Alright, I wonder what boss is in this one. I already fought the Erdtree Burial Watchdog, so it can't be that. Also, I'm just realizing now... Oh, there we go. I was like, I should probably heal... Oh, ooh, the Cemetery Shade. These guys are uh, interesting. Yeah, speaking of bleed damage. Yeah, these guys are crazy. Ay! Although on the plus side, you hurt them for a decent amount. But yeah, they just like... Just brutalize you. Uh, 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 uh. guys almost got me on bleed. And the fact that it warps away too, it's like... Oof, man. Let's see if I can get another set. Oh, okay. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. No, 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 no. Bleedy, ah! Don't bleed me, please. Nope. No! Jeez. Stop it with your warping. Oh, thank you. You actually listen. Ah, that blood loss. Okay, okay. And, oh, I thought that was going to be the last hit. I thought he was going to die. I mean, I know my, my health is fine, but I'm still just worried because I know he has some crazy combos where he just wails on you. And then the blood loss. Lutil the Headless. All right. Where'd your head go? Now, look, this is another category now. So notice the line there in between these. It's another category of Spirit Ashes. Uh, and I think these ones upgrade differently. Uh, and there's actually, I think I found three different categories, but I don't know the difference between the third category and the second, to be honest. Uh, but I think these ones cost ghost, glaive, uh, ghost glove warts to upgrade, so it's actually going to be a different type of thing. It's like a unique weapon in a way, it's a unique uh, spirit ash. So, spirit of a headless knight who leads the mausoleum soldiers. 
wields a lance and robed in death and hurls spectral lances at foes. Lutil sacrificed her life so that in death she could continue to protect a soulless demigod until the revival, earning her the hero's honor of Erdtree burial. A soulless demigod? I wonder which one that is. Huh. I actually don't know offhand. And hopefully these are answers that the more I play on my own, the more I discover the game on my own, I can have for you guys. Or, you know, we can talk about this in comments and discuss it together and that sort of thing. But I do hope that I can keep on um, getting better and better at explaining this sort of stuff and knowing exactly who this stuff's referring to. So that's my goal. Uh, like, I'm I'm getting better with, like, knowing locations and characters and stuff like that. But um, I still have a lot more to go through with the game. Anyways, we're going to go do some fun stuff now because you see that in the distance. That was in the trailer, one of the very first trailers, and that is a mausoleum. And when I had the seven hours with the game, I panicked. I saw it. I was like, I don't know what to do, and I just left. And then I pretty quickly figured out what you're supposed to do. You can buy uh, a hint for how to how to do those things, but you, you really don't need it. It's uh, I think you can kind of figure it out on your own. Uh, okay, I guess there's another rune here first, though, that we'll enter that I forgot about. I was going to go to the church. Cause there's another church over there. We're getting like just loaded up right now on um on our sp sacred tears, which is nice. So again, the more and more of those we have, the more and more Estus is gonna heal us, so the more useful each flask is. But yeah, let's just go down here. There's also an NPC here I don't know what to do, so if anybody knows, uh, I'd appreciate it. And if I figure it out, I will let you guys know and obviously do it. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I got greedy. Uh, I didn't realize there was another one in the back, but also, I knew I needed the heal, but I was just kind of like, eh, I think, I thought I was stunlocking him. So I thought like, oh, maybe I'll give it a couple more. I'll just stunlock him to death. Uh, lucky I got, lucky me, there's a Stake America there. Yeah, so I think a lot of the point of the Stake Americas as well, and I, I guess that this is a contested thing with this game, are these Stakes America? But I think the point is, like, let's say I'd rested at a really far away site of Grace. And now all of a sudden I have to do this, like, giant retraversal because of the site of Grace that I rested at. And, and it's, since this is a huge open world game, I think it's just to help with that. But I know some people are really uh, conflicted with the Stakes America, to my understanding. But I haven't. I don't think I've heard both sides of the argument. I just know that some people don't like it. So... I guess I didn't think about it too much. Okay. One of them's down, so that's good. Sometimes these guys really mess me up. I find them to actually be sometimes some of the more difficult enemies for me, for some reason. Red Branch Shortbow. Shortbow. Shortbow! Lucky drop. Red Branch Shortbow. That I can't use. I don't think I've gotten this in my other game. A bow which requires dexterity rather than the strength to master. Don't most of them require strength? I thought most bows were dex builds. Like, they all have pretty low strength and high dex. This one's just higher dex. So, I don't know. I don't know about that. So, this side of the Weeping Peninsula, if I remember correctly, there actually isn't too much going on. Uh, now, I think I've covered most of it, to be honest, but... Maybe there's just a lot I haven't found yet on my own. The Winged Scythe, according to pagan beliefs, white-winged maidens are said to be death's gentle envoys. And not much more I know about that, honestly. I don't think I've found a white-winged maiden yet, so... I don't think. Oh, wolf. What's up? And I just want to see if there's anything. Like, I feel like that's it to those runes. Uh, runes, ruin, whichever. Yeah, they, there's, these ones are pretty tiny. There's always going to at least be something in a ruin. So if you find one, always look out for that. Uh, this Everjail here, as you can see, I can't use because I need a Stone Sword Key. And I just use my only one. But you only need one for this one. For the Weeping Everjail. So we'll come back to it. And let's go rest at the church for Foist first, and then we'll do the mausoleum thing. 
And you know what I just realized too is I need to throw on my sacred tears. I got one. I didn't even put it on my. Uh, I didn't even upgrade my Estus flasks, so I'm gonna do that as well. Oh my god, I forgot to talk to uh, Melina too. As some of these ones, you can talk to Melina, and I totally forgot about that. I think didn't I in the last episode I did? So we'll do it again here. All right, sacred tear. And the fourth Church America. Basically, the closer and closer you get to the Earth Tree uh, and all that sort of stuff, the the lower the number. Because those would be, you know, they started closer with America and the teachings of America. And they slowly branched out. And they're really like, you can think of it that way, like it's teachings of America. And I really thought Melano was going to tell you something here, but I guess, I guess not. All right, let's increase our amount. And I... Uh, I'm realizing now I might not have looked still at the sacred tier description, which I said I was going to do this episode, I think. Uh, whoops. I guess that's what happens when you... I do one of these a day, uh, just because I've got, as you heard, so much stuff going on. I know, like, one person asked for two a day. The other thing is, honestly, like, selfishly, there's also the fact that I lose, like... 20 to 50 subscribers every time I post one of these, so I'm like, I feel the bleed, and I really just like, I selfishly, I'm like, oh, I finally have 100,000 subscribers, I don't want to drop under, please no. Alright, so to enter this mausoleum, all we need to do is take out all these skulls on two of the, two of the, uh, I don't know, legs of this thing. So that's, that's basically going to do it for it. And, yeah, we're not going to be able to use this mausoleum yet, but you can at least see what it says. And once these mausoleums drop down, by the way, they stay down. Uh, I basically did it for one of the mausoleums, even though I couldn't at one point, because I was just like, it is so loud. It is so loud, and especially because I'm capturing footage. I was like, I cannot have how loud this is in all my footage. You're also going to know when you've done it, because basically a bunch of rocks are going to start falling down. Uh, I thought that was it. Did I miss one on this leg? I'm not aware of. Mm. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, he's falling. He's grumbling. Such a cool little thing here. There's a lot of cool, like, hand and feet related stuff, like, thematically in this game, too. It's kind of creepy, but also cool thematically. Uh, I really like it. From Software just has such great art design and art direction in all their games. Which is also why like I get mad when people complain about the graphics, because the art direction is just so good to me. Alright, so Remembrance Duplication. So basically this is gonna be the way that uh, when you defeat one of the big demigods or or a similar type of beings, you're gonna get remembrances from them. And the remembrances are how, what you use to it's like your Lord Soul or your Boss Soul from Dark Souls. That's how you're going to get your boss weapons. Uh, there's a shack down here I'm going to visit. And then there's a tower here, which I guess I'll visit. Uh, I don't want to ruin things, but like... This is four episodes in, so I guess this game to the point where like... I'm starting to get to like, am I going to do spoilers or not? Or what am I going to show? And it's something I can just kind of show briefly. Okay, I'm gonna maybe not level up this time and see if he sells a stone sword key. Well, there's been an eight. How can I help? I... Also, I'm curious what he sells too. Oh, he sells a lantern, which means you don't have to carry a torch. He also does sell the stone sword key, so I'm gonna go ahead and buy that. Uh, Zvihander. The long blade is heavy. Yep. Uh, he also sells a walking mausoleum note, so this is how to access the mausoleum if you're not sure. To be honest, I haven't figured out how to use the lantern. <laughs> I think I bought one, and I was like, I don't know how to equip it properly, so I'm going to try that right now. I kind of wanted to buy another uh, another stone sword key, just to have a bunch, but that's fine. Okay, so let's say I use the lantern right now, right? If I switch... Oh, it just stays on. But do I have to unequip... And if I unequip it... Okay, it just stays on still. Interesting. Well, now that I bought a stone sword key, let's go ahead and go to this Evergale. And I'm going to try that out. 
And at that point, I think I think most of the Weeping Peninsula will be taken care of. Like I said, I don't think there's anything in the Poison Swamp area here, but perhaps I'm wrong and I need to re-explore all this stuff. And I don't remember there being anything over here, but I might need to re explore. There might be something along a tower there. Uh, and then here there's a tower thing that I'm going to want to look at. So, and then really it's all about uh, Castle Morn to the south that I'm going to want to hit up. This ended up just kind of being like, uh, as I'm going to call it, the Sad Peninsula side quest. So that ended up being a lot of what I did here. Oh yeah, so you can see I can't enter it. The imp seal is in effect. So let's go ahead and add it the stone sword key. Only need one. And yeah. Enter the enter enter the enter jail. Enter the ever jail. I don't remember what the boss was here. I think I was over level when I fought him, so it didn't end up being memorable. I'm probably not over leveled right now. I might be slightly Oh, it's an ancient hero of Zamor. Intro okay. Okay. So these guys hail from an ice region, uh, clearly, as they use ice. Um, the other thing is that they are good at jumping away real fast, too. Usually I've found that I can only get, like, one hit in with them, and then they'll jump away. Oh, man. I'm usually, like, way more... I can deal a lot more damage to them, typically, when I've fought them in the past. Other thing is, like, see how, like, that just keeps on going in a triangle arch? Oh, no! Oh my god. No! I want to try to bait him to do that again, and I'm not using any of my uh, flasks right now, because I'm going to be smarty pants. I actually don't know his moveset that well, because I can take these guys out. Whoa, that was honestly lucky on my part. I just got sick of waiting for him. Yeah, this is a good time to get some attacks in. Thing is, though... Oh, maybe I should only use one and not get greedy. The thing is, though... Um, you can't backstab him, as you noticed. Boop. Two. Okay, I'm going to say two is what I'm allowed to... Most of his attacks right now. You going to attack, bro? Don't know what he just did there, to be honest. He does try to inflict freezing damage. Oh, which he's going to do a little bit more of now. I'm really not having a good fight with him, but again, that's just because I really need to learn his moveset. Hey! Because last time I just took him out so easily I didn't need to. So, oh, nice. Oh, never mind, not nice. Not nice. I thought he was going to do his freezing breath. Okay, that time I definitely have time to get a strike in, so that's nice. Thank you. Oh, crap. I thought I'd missed that at first. Nope. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. Nope! Keep on screwing up my timing and rolling early, usually. Oh, damn it. That would have been perfect. I'm just trying to run away to either heal with my flask or just, like, naturally heal from my uh, effect. Okay, I feel a little safer now. All right, and, oh, is he doing the breath or is he doing the slam? He's doing the slam, okay. I want breath, you jerk. No, oh, I hit the roll button, but I was a little late. Damn it, now he's gonna do his breath and I'm not able to attack him because I have to heal. No, 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 no. Oh, that was a triple. I was gonna thought it was gonna be two. No, come on. No, oh, interesting. He's gonna kill me there. Oh, did not, okay, lucky me. Here though, possibly if I get tapped, it's okay. God, I'm doing so bad. One and two and, uh oh, he's gonna get me possibly, no, okay. Oh, I knew that was gonna be a triple attack and I, did it anyways. Ugh. Okay. Now I gotta be a little smarter. Okay, damn it. Or play a little better. It's not being smart, it's just playing better. <laughs> that's that's really what I have to do is start playing better. Oh man, really? You're doing it right after that? Attack I actually would have liked. Okay. Nope. No! Damn it! 
At least it didn't hurt for much. Nope. Oi. Come on. No! It's so frustrating. It's so sad when, like, you actually pull out the dodge and then you miss your attack. No. Okay. This is so bad. Please do your ice attack. Please do your ice breath. You didn't do your ice breath. You suck. You suck. Ice breath. Ice breath. Ice breath. Ice breath. Oh my god. That was so close. That was the most nerve-wracking fight I think I've had in this Let's Play. Radigan Scar Seal. Okay. Um, I haven't figured out how to use this yet, actually, but this is a really interesting item. Let me just really fast warp back here so I can get my health back and level up. Uh, or do I want to buy... Do I want to buy... You know what? Screw it. I'm not going to level up yet. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to buy um, two more stone sword keys so I never have to worry about them again. I think after that, I will never have to worry about them again. So uh, I'm just going to do that. Okay, cool. Don't want to think about it. Okay. So let's look at the Radigan seal that we got here. I thought it was a key item. Oh, I guess I was thinking of something else. I, I'm sorry. I was thinking of something else when I was talking about not knowing exactly what that was. So, all right, all right, I take it back. I take it back. An eye engraved with an Elden Rune, said to be the seal of King Consort Radigan, raises vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity, but also increases damage taken. So it kind of makes you like a glass uh, cannon in a way. These seals represent the lifelong duty of those chosen by the gods. This is vigor. Uh, okay. Chosen by the gods, eh? Do I have all my back? Yeah, okay. All right, looking at the time, I guess it does make sense to just head here and do this because I don't really have time to do anything in Castle Morn. So instead, we're going to go to the tower. We're going to see what's up there. Um, literally up there. Like, what's up with it and what is up there in the tower. And I think, as far as I'm aware, that's this side of the Weeping Peninsula. I think that's pretty much everything taken care of. Um of interest, but I could be mistaken. So if there's some stuff I'm missing, I will look into it. Uh, I might have missed the Sight of Grace. That's very possible. Uh, or maybe something else. So again, if there's something I, I missed that you're aware of, let me know. Fortunately, these guys are a lot easier to take out. I want to also deal with the Tree Sentinel soon here, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. That's something I didn't do in Mainland Grave that I keep on forgetting about. Show off the Tree Sentinel. I actually don't think he's... Once you get used to him, I don't think he's bad as I think some other people find him. And this isn't me being overleveled. Uh, I just think in general, the Tree Sentinels just aren't... Once you get used to them, I should say. Once you kind of figure them out. I don't remember them. I think they aren't the worst. High praise, though. They're not the worst. Just to show you guys over here real quick, though. I think this is it. It's just like the octopi. Octopuses. Octopussy. It's a James Bond reference. Wait, what's that thing that's glowing? What was that? There's like a golden thing there. Oh, okay, it's one of the scarab. I was thinking it could have been a hidden scarab, and... Well, so it is. So it is. Uh, other reason I was going here is because... You know what? I haven't killed one of these guys yet, so might as well show it. I want, I want his face. We want to see his face. Oh god, I'm going to die to him, aren't I? Hold on, let me just get away. Where is your face? Show me your face. Once you start hitting his face, you can just wallop on him and like hit his, uh, hit his tentacles and his face. And that's it for him, but... I'm having a little trouble getting his face right now. Right. Boom, boom, done. Yeah, you're hurt. Okay. Hey, you go in there. You go hide away. Thank you. Hey, why don't... Hey, let me... Let me, let me, let me. Alright. For whatever reason, it decided I wasn't allowed to do my visceral attack. Just because of the rock he was on. So we'll do it now. Yeah, the visceral attack just brutalizes him. Uh, and then again, the tentacles will kind of stun him a bit. Those front tentacles and just wall up on his face. Uh, basically, I just want to get some of these uh, 
some of the ovaries. Because I don't think I got them yet. And then I don't think I found any turtles yet. But anyways. Yeah, I really don't think there's anything over here. So. I guess that's it. For that spot. That's it. So let's go back to the tower. And as it turns out. Next episode, I'll be able to just really focus and hammer in on uh, Castle Morn. Oh, ooh, interesting. One of these guys. And all he had was mushrooms. There really is nothing interesting here. It's just mushrooms. Okay, okay. All right, game. How do I get back up, though? I'd really like to not need to uh, warp back. Uh, this looks like the way. This is the way. Oh, of course. Little home of bats. Oh, there's also a singing bat, by the way. Um, it's not unique. It's not the only one. It's just like a basically a higher level version of the bats. But you can find one on the Weeping Peninsula, which is why I bring it up now. Hey, I'm having horseback fun time. Do not hit me off. Do not hit me off of horseback fun time. I don't think there's anything over on this side, but I'm just making sure because I always worried about this area that I somehow miss fully exploring it. So that's honestly part of what I'm trying to do here is be like, okay, what did I miss? Did I miss something here? Did I? The Tower of Return. Interesting name. Interesting name if I do say so myself. Let's climb to the top and see what's there. Nothing. Nothing yet. Still nothing yet, except for this guy. There is a treasure chest. Shall we check what's inside? Hmm. Ah, it's missed! Run away! Okay, fine. I'll go check it out. Let's see what the mist has. A transporter trap! Oh my, so this is new in this game. I honestly, I haven't found a Mimic yet, but there are these transporter traps, and for the most part, you can roll away. Okay, so we can't do anything with this lift yet, uh, but we are now in Lendel, or Lendel, the royal capital. So when you hear about the capital city, this is what the game is referring to. So uh, you have like a giant ancient dragon there that's kind of part of the, the decor. And there's the Erd Tree. We're here at the Erd Tree. Pretty sick. There's a giant cut carved through it. Uh, you can actually warp right out, but look how big the map just got all of a sudden. It's like, oh my god. That map size just really increased. You are all the way up here. So everything we've been exploring in the, in the past is just the all oh, little area over here. Interesting, I'm not allowed to warp yet. I guess I have to rest at the Site of Grace first. So... Yeah, normally this area you could just warp out of pretty easily, but yeah, I guess they're doing that. You must be at the Site of Grace. You know what? I, I guess I'll wrap up this episode by trying to take on that guy over there, which is not a good idea. But yeah, once you've wrapped, or rested there, you can now warp away. Uh, not going to be a good idea, but whatever. Let's have some fun. You can't do too much here, by the way. Really, it's just like you can get the treasure chest. Um, and that's it so far that you're allowed to do. So, yeah. And look at, like, I'm just doing chip damage to him right now, which is why I said it's not a good idea to take him on. And he could probably murder me in, like, a hit or two, I'm guessing. Oh, God. Stop it, dude. Crap. Guess who can fully heal in one swig, though? It me, Kita. <laughs> Bad timing. Bad timing. No, whatever. It's, it's all all fun, right? All fun to try to take on shit you should not. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nope. Oh, crap. Really? I don't like where he is right now. This is, like, really, really not good. Please. Oh, God. Oh, God. No! Oh, man. 
I guess I'm gonna have to start editing in death montages here soon. Because I, like, I've been trying to, just to, for the sake of helping me go a little faster, not do death montages and all that. By not dying, but I really don't want people to have to just, like, watch me over and over again failing. Alright, at least I got a quick one in here. I blame it on the fact that he decided to run into that one area. That was pretty rude of him. Let's be real, when he's, like, hanging out by that chest. Really, the environments are the true challenge of this game. I don't remember what that is. Okay. Well, now I found out. Just pure, fiery death that spews out of him. Let's get away from that. I am an ant that is going to annoy the hell out of you. The worst ant you've ever dealt with. No! We need the lore! Stop it! Just want to make him fall one more time real quick. You must fall! You must fall! What the funk? Oh, it's not gonna let me do the visceral. Oh, you jerk! What the hell? You jerk! You cheeky, cheeky jerk. What was that nonsense? You... Cheater! Yeah, that's gonna be poundies. Oh my god, you cheater. Oh crap, I forgot about that. I keep on forgetting about that. And he's gonna do it again? No, okay. No, 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 no. Come on! Just need one more visceral, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, I remember this time. What? There we go. Okay. I guess I needed more than one more visceral. I am still... That's ridiculous about that other one. That was just... Ridiculous. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Alright. Get ready the Chrono Trigger dun da dun na music. <gasps> One more hit. You done, son. What'd I get? Nothing. Actually, I thought he dropped something. I guess it's like not always a drop. Okay, so he's done. Uh, let's see what we got here. The Blessed Dew Talisman, which I actually will go ahead and equip. So this is a nice little prize for it, honestly. Uh, pretty good one here. Talisman depicting a drop tree of the Erd Tree Sap, a blessed boon, gradually restores HP. It was once thought that the blessed sap of the Erd Tree would drip from its boughs forever, but that age of plenty swiftly came to a close, and with time, the Erd Tree became more an object of fate. So it's almost like the fading fire in a way, right? With the way the Earth Tree works. So again, more parallels to Dark Souls here. And I'm not trying to say they're the same story. I just think that Miyazaki has similar motifs that he always likes. That uh, Blessed Dew Talisman I just got is pretty useful here, but eventually it, it won't be when you level up a lot and start to have a lot more vitality if you choose to go for vitality. But here it's, it's decent. I think it's decent. Um... Yeah, so these, as you can see, an enemy over there. Eventually, we will be coming back to Landell, but this is all that we can do at the moment for Landell. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's Landell. So, I'm going to go ahead and warp all the way out, and we're going to come back to the Castle Morn lift now. Because uh, this, I think, is probably what I'm going to be doing next is Castle Morn. Uh, so, this is. Hold on, let me level up. I'll talk about plans, and then, uh, yeah, that'll be the wrap up, I think. One more strength. I'm almost at 31, which is my big goal here, so I can use the giant awesome sword. 
Uh, okay, so I think my goal here is going to be next episode I'm going to do Castle Morn, unless you guys really want to see Stormville next. And then I'm going to start working my way through Stormhill here. So I'll probably take on like a couple dungeons that are up here, maybe this Everjail um, areas there, possibly, potentially there. And then, um, and then yeah, we're going to work our way into Stormvale, take out all the Stormvale Castle after that, and then keep on moving on, keep on cruising. Maybe I'll stop in Caleb for a moment next episode or one of the episodes to grab the Ultra Greatsword that I want just because it's fun. But yeah, so that's that's everything. Again, thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me make sure there is no talking to Melina here. And uh, yeah, that's all. So I will see you guys next time. See you guys later. Hey. Peace.